Hello and welcome. This is going to be a how to guide for live streaming, a full live stream setup. So I'm going to cover various things, but I'm going to quickly give you an overview of what we're planning to cover today. So this how to guide, I'm going to cover parts, six parts, basically a plan of action. We're going to set up some ideas of what we want to do. We're going to do a video gear setup. So I'm going to show you a full breakdown. I'll give you the headers so you know what we're going to be discussing and how I'm going to be looking at them. Uh, audio gear setup. So I know that's been like a big question people have been asking me. I've talked about video gear and setup, but what about the audio? What about mics and making sure the volume can be incorporated into the live stream or the video? Uh, we're going to look at software setup. What software do you need? I'll also cover some troubleshooting. So loads of common questions or people think so things that people have struggled with and then finally I'll show you how to test your live stream safely. So in today's video I'm going to go through a number of topics make sure to check out the description for all the notes I'll link it in chapters to make it easier for you. This is going to be a slightly longer video uh, there's a few points that we're going to be covering but because it's a longer video I want you to get the best from this and jump to the sections. I've had loads of people question things about different aspects so I'm hoping I can link you to this one step guide. Spend a bit of time and go through this full guide and you'll get every answer you need. If you still struggle after it don't worry I'm still here to help you so we'll get to the bottom of it and we'll find the best way for you to get your live stream sorted. So if I show you basically what I'm going to be covering the first plan of action is going to be let's evaluate what you already have. So what do you already need? What do you have? Your current gear list. Let's think about your budget. So I'll discuss that and see what we want to do with that requirements and your PC resource. What type of videos are you planning to make and recording or live? So if I cover these points in a bit more detail, so let's say evaluate what you already have. Do you have a PC? What kind of PC do you have? Are you going to be using your PC to live stream? Do you have a laptop? Maybe you want to do it off a mobile phone. So there'll be loads of different types of things that we can do. And we can get to the bottom of that. And through this guide, I'll get steps for you. What sort of budget have you got in mind? I'm going to try and look at two main budgets. So one, which is going to be a lower end. Let's put a figure on that. Let's say up to about 60 or 70 pounds in the uk that's roughly about 80 90 dollars in america so that's your lower end because i think you'll need to have some sort of investment whether that's going to be in a camera or whether that's going to be in some lighting it's going to help make your video a lot better uh, requirements and your pc so a lot of people talk about the video side of it and what you can do with the live stream but a lot, a lot of people will talk about your current requirements for your computer because i don't want you to get stuck with your computer where You've got everything else ready but your computer can't fulfill the demand of streaming because it's the software i use is obs and that needs a bit of system resource to be able to live stream because it's encoding the software it's basically recording think of it like it's recording the video feed onto tape and it needs some data to be able to do that and some performance uh, recording live or making videos just for yourself with the software i'll show you two options you can record onto your hard drive so you've got a file ready to upload or you can live stream so what we'll do is we'll cover the points uh, i've got like a mini five step guide which is this and one is internet speed test so we'll get straight into this what we're going to do is i'm going to show you how i do my internet speed test and why the internet speed test is such a big thing to worry about when you're live streaming so let me share my screen with you now and show you. This is a broadband speed test search in Google. And it actually gives you a run speed test now. It comes up with a little box and it does a check. There's two numbers it's going to give you. One is going to be your download speed and one is going to be your upload speed. So let me bring that screen slightly up so you can see it. Uh, you can see there's two numbers there one is 77 megabytes that's a download speed that means when you're watching a video or you're downloading something from the internet that's the number that impacts you the second number which in this case is about 10 megabytes which is not bad for 1080p video i could stream at that and get good quality so 9.74 megabytes upload that means if i was to stream i could do it comfortably at 1080p and 1080p would be this type of quality and this type of quality. So it's actually enough to get you started in video and live streaming. So say for example that 
that number was lower what does that mean so instead of 9.74 megabytes let's say it was 4 megabytes or 5 megabytes and that would trigger me into thinking you know what it's not quick enough for a 1080p stream so if I wanted to live stream and I was trying to stream with a lower number then the quality of the video won't be the same there'll be some dropped frames which means the live stream experience won't be great so in that case what you can do to counteract that is instead of streaming at 1080p video stream at 720p video all you're basically doing is the picture that you're sending out from big picture you're going down to a smaller picture a lot of people will be watching the stream on a mobile phone or a device so in that case it'll be fine so you don't have to worry it's not like they're gonna be noticing a lot of a difference and it's a live stream as long as your audio is good and you should be able to tell here now as i speak away towards this camera the volume will be different as if i was to speak to this camera because i have a microphone set up so that's something else to think about number two on my list is webcams or cameras what's the difference a webcam will be a different quality so that's a webcam there 1080p and the quality from that will be not as good as a dslr camera right now this camera is a camcorder which is doing 1080p I've got one light there and I've got one light just out of shot up here so that gives you an idea of how it would look and how it would feel so if that's something you wanted to get quality wise this is probably similar to a webcam if you had good lighting and the flip side of it if you had a DSLR camera like I do here on a Canon EOS webcam utility tool that's the quality you get and you know what you could even do something like a third shot here so you can see now I've actually got a camera up here which is also a camcorder so cameras are going to be great for live streaming i'm doing all of this on the fly this is all one take and i'm actually using shortcut keys if i press f2 it'll go over to this camera if i f f1 it'll come to this camera if i do escape it'll go back to our list so we've covered number two webcams and cameras make sure to stay tuned because one of the good ones in here is displays which people don't think about so make sure you hang about to for point number five i think it'll you'll like that one so if I go back to the list we've got mic and audio so mic and audio is a big thing let me close that screen down and go back to full screen again so you want microphone that's going to give you good quality you you can actually get away with slightly bad video when I say bad like less quality but if they can hear you clearly then that's the main point can i show you this i can show you this let me go to that wide screen so on this screen here you can see this is the microphone i'm using so just by adjusting the microphone slightly and putting it like this you should have seen an impact to the quality of the audio make sure you've got headphones on if you don't have headphones on you might not be able to tell the difference so this is a microphone on a boom arm connected to my table which means that there's less movement and less movement makes it nicer for the audience now i've got a slightly more advanced setup here because you can see this mixing board here you can actually adjust individual levels to make your volume sound a bit more deeper or lighter for bass and treble and things like that so that's something more professional that you can set up but it's not essential you can have something like just a microphone plugged straight into your computer and that will do fine so think about that and see how you feel about that because microphones and audio mixer boards can get expensive but when you're recording on a live stream the main thing is if you can get separate audio that's going to help you a lot because separate audio means that it's all going directly into the software and the software you can use to sync up the video and the audio because you want ideally everything synced up sometimes there can be a delay if there's a uh, another software involved for example but we'll cover software as well so that's a bit about mic and audio lighting is number four so number four lighting is very important so just here there we have a, a nice maybe that won't sound as nice as it can do right there i have a led panel light do you need much light you do need light if you want it to be professional and a crisp image then it'll make a difference and what that allows you to do is you can actually use different lighting colors so just in this color if you notice i've got like a bit of an orange tinge to me because that light there is orange and that light there is set to white in the 
is well it's colors basically it's the different numbers you can set in there which gives you different temperatures and this one you'll see it's a bit more natural lit so that gives you an idea about lighting if you can get lights i would suggest get lights that'll make a massive difference even if you were to use a webcam and not spend a couple of hundred pounds on a dslr get a webcam get a light and that will actually give you a lot more nice setup this is going to be like an overview of all the points but i will go on to giving you examples because i want to give you sections about each of the points i'm mentioning so the internet speed we saw an example on just to recap and the webcams and cameras i showed you the multiple cameras that you can use and how they would help you to make your live stream more interesting um, and let's go back was it mic and audio so audio is a good one when i'm talking about audio i'm actually not talking about microphone i'm talking about audio audio because what would happen is if you have a meeting and you have a skype call live you might get the other person speaking to you echoing back so you want to make sure you plug in your headphones and then you plug it in your headphones to your computer so you can hear that person in your ears but not back into the live stream because otherwise you'll get like a loop which basically means you're hearing the person twice or three times or infinity so that is quite important for audio you can also put audio in your live stream and uh, like for example in this hold you'll see this bit of music in the background and that relates to the software that you use we'll talk a bit about software which i have not put on the list because i'll give you that as a bonus tip lighting we've covered we've covered mic and audio and now displays so displays what do i mean by displays when you're live streaming you want to be able to speak and read the chat so you'll see here i have two monitors can you see you can't see let me let me switch you let me switch you around there maybe you can't see that as much but there's one screen that's probably a bit too loud okay so there's one screen so right now i'm using that screen to record on the left hand side and on the right hand side i have a, win a window that i can share with you like this so that shows you one screen this secondary screen here i actually normally put my chat window on so i could do something like this and now that has a chat window one or a notes window what that allows you to do is use two displays if you're using a laptop you can actually plug in another display into your laptop and have your laptop display and an additional display and trust me it helps so much in live streams because you can actually not worry as much because you've got one constant feed of the camera and at the same time you can see what's going on in chat and if people are popping in or you want another window to come up so that will help you a lot normally this display has a, a shade on it what that shade does is similar to that when lights are on it stops the display color going off so it's color calibration and making sure you're getting the best of the color you can see my light there now that's basically a diy bit of a light setup what i've done is used the old box and put in the led panel put in a bit of uh, paper and it's making it a bit more nice and soothing it's not as harsh so that's the idea with setting it up so we've covered the five points here and the last point that i haven't really covered is the software now this is going to be the main thing that will make or break it you can either live stream directly into youtube or you can set up a nice little setup in program like open broadcast studio there's two types of program you get Streamlabs obs and obs one is geared more towards streaming and one is a bit more lightweight one lets you put like add-ons in there and things so you can look at that you can think about that part two video gear setup now i'm going to cover things like what cameras can you use i've got a number of different clips i've made that i've compiled together to show you action cameras video cameras such as camcorders using a webcam using a mobile phone using a dslr camera all those are linked in the following section where i'll show you how i'm doing them you'll see examples and stuff so expensive versus cheap gear the benefits of either the cost involved will give you rough figures the workflow how you want to proceed with your video and the editing and how you're going to upload it um issues syncing video so a lot of people have mentioned that uh, i'll cover lighting as well within this because i think part of the video and the aspect of how a video looks the actual 
lighting makes a big impact on that so we'll talk about lighting and some cheap options common issues faced so what issues have people mentioned in the comments i'll give you common answers and hopefully that'll help you as well you may have heard people online or in videos talk about what a hdmi capture card is or how they use it so i'm going to tell you what a hdmi capture card actually is it's something like this you can get different types in higher price range and lower price range there's a number of factors that you need to think about when you're buying a hdmi capture card what is the intended purpose of it so with the capture card you're basically going to be feeding video or some type of signal from a device that can be a games console it can be an integrated component like a dslr camera anything like that but the capture card is basically something that converts the signal to be able to use it on your computer the different types like the elgato there's this cheap one which is probably about 20 pounds i'll put a link in the description so you can pick this up if you're interested in it there's limitations of them if you need it for gaming you might want a faster speed what i mean by speed is frame rates so frame rates if you're gaming you'll know what that is it basically if your screen jumps and it lags you, you can call that a frame rate how much of the game you can see if it's a 30 frames a second you won't get as much of a real life experience as you would if it was 60 frames a second if it's 1080p it might not be as good as 4k so looking at those budgets you want to get a card with those ratings so if you were to get a 4k 60 frames a second capture card it's going to be a lot more expensive than a 1080p 30 frames a second card this is sufficient for this type of thing which is video however if you want to do a full-on gaming experience and set that up separately get one of the more higher rated cards so if you've got a good healthy budget or you're you don't have as much money to spend there's gonna be a lot of things i'm gonna cover you can see right now i have an action camera here i've got a dslr i've got a, a webcam i'm actually recording on a dslr right there and the, that wider view is on a, a camcorder so you'll be interested to see how all of this works i'm gonna have options linked in the chapters the options are going to be low budget most affordable live stream camera webcam for live streaming action camera for live streaming how to set up an android mobile phone for live streaming in obs that's the program i use my choice is obs i'm currently using right now i could easily make this a live stream with multi-angle shots by just clicking go live so you can see i can easily switch between cameras on screen i can have a number of cameras i'm going to talk to you about how to set up multiple cameras so multiple camera live streaming so that is a camcorder right there and it's recording so you can see it's quite a wide shot i want you to see a bit more of the surrounding area but that's going through a hdmi capture card so are action cameras good for live streaming yes they are they can be there's alternatives out there see what you want to do what's your budget how much space have you got in your studio because think about it action cameras are tiny so i could technically have three here on little uh, tripods and they won't cause a fuss whereas bigger camcorders need a slightly sturdier tripod as well so something to think about should you use them are they good i've done loads of videos about action cameras and why they can be good for live streaming but the main thing i'm going to show you today is i'm going to give you examples of what it looks like what are the pros what are the cons what you need to keep in mind don't expect great quality from cheap action cameras but they're workable i've used them for a number of years on some of my early videos and this video i'm going to basically show you an overview of what they're like that is an action camera goodman's action camera i've had it for years you could probably see some of my videos and the stuff i've done with it um it's a good option it's an easy to use option i don't think you can get them anymore i'll put some type of links in the description so you can see similar ones but if i show you the types of videos i made so back in january 2020 i made this video that view here the my mouse is hovering over is an action camera view that is a canon webcam a dslr view if i quickly play some of that clip you can see the type of quality you can expect from it so that's two screens in one screen but for demonstration purposes if you think about it if it's steady it's perfectly fine so let's jump into it okay so this is option one it's going to be a low budget most affordable live streaming camera what i'm going to how to switch between cameras when you're live streaming or even when you're recording into obs i'm going to show you something that's great that i've been using hello and welcome to the show i'm your host Zof, and i basically share 
loads of different nuggets of information to help you get through your journey. This is something that isn't too expensive. I'll put a link in the description, but I find it to be very handy. Talk, talking to that camera, when you have so many cameras set up, you forget which one to look at. There's one up here, there's one over there. And let me show you this. At the back of here, there is a little insert you can basically take out. It's USB wirelessly powered. So if I stick that in my USB, so it's chargeable via a mini USB. So you can plug that right into here and charge the device. You turn it on, a light will pop up there. And then you can do stuff like F1, F2. And you can basically use it as a remote. So it's more, it's actually a keyboard with a mouse on. That's what it is. Let me give you the right camera. Okay, there. So F1 is that camera there. F2 is that camera there. F3 would be my multi screening, which you won't see great stuff on, but actually, you know what? Let me put that nicely so you can see it. So F3 would be over here. So that would be F3. So now you can see I've got multi screen view. And then I can easily go F2, which is that screen there, F1. How you do that, let me take you to my screen and show you how to set that up. So when you're live streaming, you won't need one of those fancy Elgato dock stations or anything. You can kind of adapt this. So if I go F1 and press Q, I get that swipe effect. And then there's multiple other stuff you can add on to different keys. So little pop-ups to subscribe and stuff like that. But in this part is two things. I could probably put more things in there, but I'll put two. Let me bring you to the wide shot. The two things I want to put in here is a webcam. So that's the webcam. Let me bring you in on my wide there. So that is a 1080p webcam. You saw I had that on the top down shot. I'll give you an example now of how it looks and what you can do with it and how I set it up. All right, guys. So if you're here to see how the Advent Full HD Pro 1080p action camera looks, this is being recorded with the actual webcam so this is the quality i'll take you on to the video now where you can actually see me comparing this with my current action camera that i use as a webcam my dslr camera and a quick look at okay so that was a quick look at the webcam footage i recorded that earlier throughout my journey so i want you to see how the quality looks of that and what it does for you this webcam is not an expensive webcam it's actually a cheap webcam i'll put a link in the description so you can pick it up this is the box for it and in the UK PC World and Curry seems to be the place that South sees. A lot of people have had complaints about it but to be honest if you're on a budget you can easily put that on top of your monitor. You can stream for ages. There's no battery requirements. It's plugged in via USB so it's going to continuously get uh, power. It's not going to get too hot and turn off which happens with other options I'm going to show you. So for a quick and dirty way of getting a web stream set up, that would be a good option. If you've got a gameplay, you can put this in the corner of yourself and have uh, the video being recorded of the gameplay separately, which you'll need a capture card for, which I'm just dropping there, uh, which I've done a separate video on, but I'll, I'll link you to other bits in this chapter. It's a wireless webcam because you can see there, I'm kind of like linked on Wi-Fi network so I can actually walk around and give you a tour and stuff as well so that's quite good Um, so yes let's see how to set up a mobile phone as a wireless web camera for live streaming on YouTube Twitch Skype whatever have you I'm taking to my screen now we'll do that so you're going to start with IP camera adapter. I'll put a link in the description. We start on our PC. So I'm downloading this straight onto my PC so I can get this ready before I go into the mobile phone store and app store and get the app. So I've been trying to do this for a while. There's loads of tutorials online. Some are outdated. Some talk about NDI drivers and all sorts. That didn't work for me. I even tried doing a screen capture of my DSLR EOS utility tool. And that was a bit of a pain because it lagged. So this is what worked for me. I'm hoping you'll find it helpful. So IP camera, when you've downloaded it and installed it on your desktop, you're basically gonna go onto your Windows menu and search IP camera and open up this little dialog box. It's got a few things in there like a address, username, password. Then you move over to your mobile phone and app store and you actually download the app uh, IP webcam. That's what it looks like. I've already installed it. Straightforward install. Open it. 
and then you'll get a screen with like loads of settings on go through and have a look at some of the settings it's straightforward but main things to worry about is the video resolution that you want to stream at or make the mobile phone video available at. i put it at 720 because anything higher than that would lag via youtube um, streaming video quality up on halfway and orientation auto so if you portrait or manually it'll do that and the frame rates up at max 30 so that's just those settings there and once you've gone through that right at the bottom it says start server but we won't do that right now what we'll do is we'll go and set a shortcut up on my mobile phone desktop just make sure that's all okay yes so now back to the desktop i've created the shortcut there when you go right to the bottom there's a little start server button so that there will give you what your phone will show via the ip address and right at the bottom it's got an ip address there so that's the address you need but what a lot of people don't tell you is when you put that ip address into the camera feed url you have to put slash camera feed or what, what was that i'll put that in the description i'll copy and paste it so you can use it so once you click ok there it will say successfully connected and then you can go into your browser and actually put that same link in video feed so slash video feed and um, so you'll see now i can see that via my internet browser which is a good thing because if you're using obs we can actually add it as a browser source because some of the guys uh, on youtube are saying add it as a video capture and screen capture sorry but that's a bit of a pain because you can't really move that screen around if you do move it around then that's going to cause you issues because if you have a screen over it but here back on windows basically open up the menu camera ip I didn't have uh, OBS Streamlabs uh, installed, so I couldn't record my recording screen. So this is a mobile phone is a bit amateurist, sorry, but it'll give you an idea of what's going on. So basically add it as a source, as a, a browser, call it wherever, I'll call it test IP or something. And when you click OK, it gives you the screen where you can put an internet URL. So that's where you want to put your IP address. Um, you can change the resolution here to 1280 by 720 and then just make sure that it's shut off and it's not on that screen so you can use that camera on multiple uh, scenes so we click ok so here that basically gives you that now so i'll show you what that looks like and actually it's a wireless webcam because you can see there i'm kind of like linked on wi-fi network so i can actually walk around and give you a tour and stuff as well so that's quite good Um. so yes i think this will come in handy because what i'm planning to do is you'll see that's my starting screen that's my main screen so I'm looking just over here I've got a chat screen this is going to be for a live stream and news segment a hold screen which plays a bit of music a live desktop so you can actually see me doing stuff a dual cam the second option I'm going to show you is an action camera for live streaming you may have seen my channel is about photography but it's naturally led me into different types of video work so this is an action camera which is here and that action camera can be used as a webcam. I'm going to show you some clips of how I did that, how I did multi-angle shots. Let's go into that now. So I'm going to give you a side-by-side -side comparison. This is the Goodman's action camera, which is currently the small one you're seeing. Alongside that, this is the new Advent action camera. If I resize that one, it's that one there. So if I resize this, it is a different aspect ratio because it obviously is a bit zoomed in that's those two cameras side by side and to compare them to something even more well high end is the dslr camera which is in the back if i bring that down this third one is a dslr camera and that's up there so it gives you a rough idea of how good the advent action camera is versus a 1080p action camera did i call it on a webcam so advent webcam is this this one action camera that one and that's the dslr so that's giving you a three point view of how good that is and if i go to wide this is the new advent action camera I turn that off then 
This one here is the Goodman's action camera. First one was the webcam. This is the action camera. And then the final one is this, which is the EOS, which is a DSLR camera. So if you're looking for different qualities, this is basically a comparison between a Goodman's action camera as a webcam, an actual advent webcam, and a DSLR camera. So again, there you go. Okay, what's the best thing about an action camera for as a webcam? There's a number of things that it helps you with. In those clips you would have seen, I used it fairly easily. It's quite small, I can stick it on different angles. It's plugged via USB. You can take the battery out. There's no battery requirements. The battery doesn't run out. Whenever you turn it on, it's on and it works. I'll link you again in the description to different action cameras that can do that. Because I know if you're not in the UK, it's quite hard to pick up the Goodman's action camera. But for live streaming, it is an option. Lighting is going to be a big thing. So make sure to check out my lighting section to see how the best way you can light yourself is to get the best from cheaper small cameras. But there comes a time in your life when there's not enough light. I've been using this little LED panel for a while, been doing well. Got two of them and they perform decently. But you need to upgrade and you need to be so. What? Um, that's the settings there exactly as before. But all I've really done is put a light up and it's a lot brighter. It's like bloody daylight. So I've got two of them. One has a soft diffusion on an extra soft diffusion. That one there is just raw. It's a purple tinge. I'll put that right behind me, acting as a hair light and a bit of a background. Just there, a bit of a background to make me pop from the background. That purple and green goes quite nicely. You can see they've got like purple wings. It's really interesting. So uh, I've got one little one led light just over to my right if i turn that on okay there so that's light over to my right which is giving me a bit of thin light and right now in the back it's quite dark so i wasn't sure to keep it if i wanted to keep it dark or if i wanted it a bit more bright so i've got another led panel over here which i've lighted i'll show you that now so as i turn that around you'll see that gives you a bit more of a a clear cut look talking about photography i'll have just the background dark because it's not much interest there but in this one i wanted it lit well just to give you an idea of what type of lighting works so that's the two lights i've used i could do this with one light which i'll show you in a second but let me just put my background led light on so now you'll see there's some background led lighting going on so that just gives you a bit of pop the reason I'm looking off there is because I've got my phone on a monitor so it's kind of showing me what is going on because my old Canon 550 doesn't have a flippy out screen so you can make do with old kit I mean my kit's not excellent but it makes videos so that's the main idea good content rules apparently so I put the LED light on I'll turn that light off which was the main light and then this fill light if I take the diffusion panel off you'll see it gets a lot brighter and a lot harsher so you notice that that's all that I'll put on front of it it's just that material there. this section is going to be about the mid-range camera options you've got available for you I'll show you an example of a camcorder that I've set up let me bring you on to the that angle there and that is going to show you the camcorder itself I'm going to show you some clips now about the camcorder, how you can place it in different positions. I've got an angle of it on my desk. I've got a top down angle of it and a few options. So have a look at those and see what you think. This sort of quality from a camcorder. And if you use it as a USB and a Canon DSLR, that's what you're going to get. This is a quick test just to give you an idea. Like for like, literally video on the best of gaming mouse video. Yeah. This is a Saika not for sale as you can see clearly noted there because it yeah. came as part of the rug package and that should be your watch for today and i'm not looking at the camera i'm looking at the watch so should you buy it it's got a click okay so i'm hoping you found that little clip useful that's some clips i recorded previously with camcorders what you will want to find is 
continuous power. Continuous power is going to be your friend. With camcorders, how they work is you can plug a battery with them. They go on for ages, so you can just use them and record for ages. But if you have an adapter unit, which X Pro, I'm not sponsored by them, but that's the one I use. I was able to pick it up fairly quickly online. I'll put a link in the description. You can get it for any make of camcorder you've got. It's a 1080p camcorder. You can zoom it. You can set it with the clean HDMI, which you're seeing at the moment. There's no like menus or anything around the screen. And yeah, that's the camcorder. Um, would I recommend it? I would. If you're live streaming and you just want to stream, you don't want to think about all that long-winded stuff, that's a good option for you. Let me show you how you set this up in OBS. So I'll show you a quick clip of how you can add cameras in OBS. Yes, HDMI. Right now, that is my sources screen on Streamlabs OBS. You can see I have my display capture, which is showing you what I'm doing. I add a source. Once I add a source, I go to video capture device. You select that and you do add source. Once you add source there, what will happen is it will allow you to pick a new camera source. So I'm adding a new one. I'll call it HDMI one. And let's call it one as in the letter one would be better, wouldn't it? Okay, there. I'll add source and then it comes to a screen. Once your USB devices are plugged into your computer, it'll give you there. See that USB USB video? That is both of those cards. If I had three, it'll show me three. As long as you've got the USBs on your computer or laptop, you're fine. So there's HDMI 1. I can turn it on and off by the eye. Depends how familiar you are with OBS. I might do a separate video if that's something you want to know about. So, okay, next one I'll do again. I want to add a video capture device. Add source. Do a new source. Let's call it a new name. So I'll call this one HDMI 2. So for the second camera, just remember which one is which. So when you're switching between them, is a bit more nicer for the viewer so here i picked the second one so right there i've been able to add that done and i have two cameras one and two so that shows you how easy it is to add in obs and what that allows you to do is you can just untick it while you're doing a session so i'm right now i'm recording the video i can just click and show you a different view which is handy so that's how to set it up that's why you would set it up Okay, so this is going to be the third option. This is a bit more pricey. This is going to be around DSLRs. So DSLRs, if you're already a photographer, you probably have these. So it might actually be a cheaper option for you. You'll have to get a capture card. You'll have to make sure your HDMI out of your camera is clean. What we mean by clean is there's no menus around it. I'll show you some clips of the DSLR in action. So you can see the types of angles and what it looks like with different angle shots, like the wide and the zoom. It's moving. It's not moving, so... If I do that, that's still not great. Flash, and I'll give you a link in the description where you can actually check it out and see how much it's uh, worth. Currently going for fifty nine ninety six. It's a cheap flash which takes four AA batteries, and it's a great addition to your kit if you want to use it for the EOS R five and eight K shooting pro mirrorless camera it looks quite nice actually a lot of the dials on it and it looks quite up this is the TV with a 24 to 70 millimeter lens at 24 millimeters which is here now I'm switched live over to my wide angle shot which looks okay the idea is I'm going to show larger products so I want a wider shot so you can see here that's the camera that i was looking at just a moment ago this is a wide camcorder shot and this will give you an idea of the different angles and how they look in photography that is a 1080p camcorder and this is a dslr you can tell it's got a nice background blur on the dslr it looks a bit more natural i look a bit more normal whereas that i look a bit compressed in a way so i look a bit which is unusual so that's a quick test of those two wide and further away angles. So that would have been a look at the DSLR camera and how it performs. You can set up multiple camera angles. You will need to get a camera adapter if you want to stream for a long period of time. So with the DSLR, you can stream for a certain amount of time depending on the type you've got. It can automatically turn off if it gets too hot. So the key is to make sure that you've got the right type of camera, you're in the right mode and you've tested it. There's a few options for webcams 
and DSLRs, which I'll link you to in the chapters. But it's basically a tool that lets you make Canon cameras into a webcam, which is an alternative. Okay, so this is the audio gear setup part of the tutorial and guide. This is part three different mics i'm going to show you a number of different mic options that i've used in the past i've used a, a microphone which is a cheaper microphone such as a, a newer mic which i plug directly into my computer where a mic lead i'm going to give you a breakdown of different leads and cables so you understand what cables do what i'm going to speak to you about audio mixer boards which is something i use and i find it, it improves the audio quality hopefully you can compare this audio you're hearing right now to what you hear throughout the next sections and it'll give you an idea try and put headphones on if you can because that's the ideal situation where you can tell the difference uh, using a usb mic you can actually buy a usb mic which plugs straight into your usb and you can use that instead of faffing around with all the cables and um, there, there's pros and cons for both but we'll talk about that thinking about your audience so who is it that's going to be listening to it and what are the expectations from your quality are you going to use your audio for a number of things? I use it for live streaming. I use it for podcasting. I do voiceovers, so I need it to be a good quality. Syncing issues we'll speak about and common questions that people have had. So let's go into this section now. The microphone as well as the pop filter and the phantom power. So it's a full kit that you get. And I normally use my AKG mic to do voiceovers, which I'm using at the moment. But in this video clip, I'll go through the unboxing. I'll rush through that and then I'll give you some sample audio of my current well the new mic have its hands and my current AKG unedited. This is the newer 700 microphone. Photography is about making informed choices. There is no one way to take a picture. Almost any picture at its first scene whether it is a landscape view. This is the AKG mic test. Photography is about making informed choices. There is no one way to take a picture almost any picture at its first scene whether it's a landscape view so there you can see there's a big difference in the microphones they're both unedited clips uh, there so you might have had a dip in quality but that's normally how it records directly out of the microphone and then i normally add a bit of extra of a room um, which i've got an actual tutorial on so i might link that in the cards and i use audacity the voice software which lets you kind of improve the voice but anyway, AKG is in a league of its own. Obviously, it's a great uh, microphone, the condenser mic I use. You can see on the table there behind me while I'm setting this one up. And it's a condenser reporter's mic. And you're easily looking at 190, 200 pound uh, uh, microphone there. So they are obviously built like a tank. They're metal construction. And I'll put some details to that separately. But anyway, this newer mic, um, if you're new into voiceovers and doing well your own videos and things then it's probably okay to get i mean they're relatively cheap to pick up you're looking at about 30 40 quid for the full set here and um, but i have found that it's not excellent so i think you may want to think twice basically <laughs> so it's a uh... hi guys welcome to the video this is going to be talking about the mic options you have available to you when setting up re audio for recording so i'll get straight into this so the first mic i'm showing you here is a it's kind of a hacked mic you'll see that in my old video it was actually a, a lead for my headphones which had a mic built on it and because the lead allowed me to record into my mobile phone and it had this little clip on it i basically fold, folded it over and put a little um that foam thing i had from another mic and this is the actual mic i've been using for a lot of my videos so everything i've recorded up until this point has been recorded off camera um, into my mobile phone onto the Rec Forge Light app and that um, allows you to monitor your levels and give a bit of a boost so I normally do like a plus seven boost I have this it's like a lavalier mic on my t-shirt and I use that and um, it's about the right height um, in terms of putting it on your shirt hiding it by the buttons and the lead goes into my pocket and the phone's in my pocket or I leave it on the table and that works quite well i think i get good audio considering it's like a bit of a diy hack job the tape there is just all the two wires together it's shining you can see and the mic there you got to be have a close look at that so that's one option i use i'll show you what the audio sounds like on that now kind of uh, well building up getting better obviously and um, better clients and that kind of thing but a lot of them have been mainly for people that wanted certain types of images and i kind of supply those images um, in timely frame now obviously it's all changed because once I did the shoot okay so this uh, option here is the AKG mic 
and this is something I've had for a while. I've used this for reporting type shoots that I've done in the past for fashion blogs. So when you interview um, the uh, designers, we use this mic. It's the D230 AKG, made in Austria. It's a good solid quality mic. It's all metal construction and I've had it for ages. I'll say about two or three years. And I've, I've just had it in the drawer lying about and I'm actually using that right now with this voiceover on this video. Um, it goes into Audacity and I do a few checks which I'll link up in the video which I do a little uh, adjustments on the audio to make it a bit crisper but it's got a built-in top omnidirectional no, omni mic so it's actually quite good because it doesn't take any of the ambient noise it takes just the person speaking directly into it and the cage is built onto this which you'll see is actually quite good because it's got like a uh, normally you get the big foam, foam covers but this has actually got it built into the metal, metal cage so it stops any um, pop and kind of that kind of thing so it's quite a handy mic it's got a good hold to it so when I do voiceovers and sitting in front of the computer I do like using it because it's got a good weight to it and it feels nice and you can see how the quality of this sound this is the Canon EF 50mm 1.4 lens it was first released in June 1993 this lens weighs 290 grams and has 8 blade diaphragm with 6 groups of 7 elements, the maximum aperture of 1.4 and minimum f22. This lens is great for shallow depth of field effects. Ok guys, so this one here is the third option, is the Purple Panda Lavalier Lapel Microphone. It's an omnidirectional condenser mic and it's a clip-on one. So you can see here based on these close-ups that it's a decent quality mic, it's got a metal um, in a cage and it comes in a kit so you get a few extras with it and I'll show you what that sounds like um, here. This is the Purple Panda mic and I'm talking directly into this um, there's no muff, um, no sound suck on it. So if I attach that Hello, testing one two three, testing one two three so it's the same recording settings as I was using on the old mic. I've just swapped the mic over to this one and you'll instantly hear what it sounds like recording into the phone. Hi guys, so this last one here is a Boya mic. It's been getting quite a good um, response online and because of that response I've got one in just to test it out. Um, it's a Boya mini shotgun mic similar to the Rode mic, that's the, the mini version they do. It's like a bit, basically a copy of that I think. And the dead cat you get on it is quite a big one and it's I don't like it because it sheds so if you put it in your camera gear or anywhere it's actually pieces of hair everywhere from this like a bit of an animal shedding away it's a good size mic it kind of fits in your hand it's good construction it's quite solid in terms of the build and um, I've kind of had mixed things with this because when I got it it was broken so I had to kind of contact the buyer and they, they offered me a refund of the money and all that business but I was like you know I need the mic but can you just not send me the stand the holder because it looks like it's broken um, and I've tried gluing it but it hasn't worked very well to try and hold it back in place it's like a bit of a shock mate so I'm struggling with this one um, I, I, I'm recording on a 550D and that doesn't let you kind of control the audio levels so it's not been great for me this mic I've tried it and I've not really liked it so I'm, I'm assuming it's me because everyone online gives great reviews about it uh, HDMI to USB converters, adapters and for audio I'm going to speak about all the cables you're going to need to plug in. Okay, let's look at USBs first. Three sizes of USB. Micro USB on the end and a mini USB and a standard USB 2.0. I'm doing a little comparison with a 20 pence piece to give you an idea of size because if you're looking at your cables it might be hard to determine. The main two that get the most confusion is these two the micro and mini. I'm hoping this shows you a slight difference in the micro on the right and the mini on the left. The mini is a bit more square and you can see more of it inside. So let's look at the micro and see what you can do with the micro. Firstly, the micro is a standard one for Samsung and Honor, Huawei, Android phones, the earlier models. It also fits in action cameras. So if you're looking to live stream with an action camera, this is the cable you need. It's a micro USB to a USB. And you can see they come in different colors and sizes. Here's a short length. I've got a yellow one and I've got a black one. The colors don't make a difference. It's just the different models available online. So look at a USB 2.0 micro USB to a USB for live streaming with an action camera or 
using your phone to be charged. That's the first option there. We look at the next one, which is going to be the mini, and that's a slightly more square one to the micro. So here, let's go there. The mini is the middle one, and you can see that is the one that you can use for cameras. I'll show you examples of it. And firstly, let's have a quick look at the size. So you can see it's just under half a centimeter. Um, I'm hoping this helps in terms of like the, the dimensions when you're buying it. I'll put a 20p piece there to give you an idea of size as well. And it's a bit more square. The micro is like a bit flat. It's like as if someone squeezed it or bit on it. Um, that's the other side of it, which is a standard USB 2.0. And it fits in things like uh, keyboards. So if you have a wireless keyboard, you can charge it with this. And you can see the holes a little bit bigger. So that's your option there. And also if you're live streaming with the DSLR camera, this is the one you can connect to the camera and plug to your USB of your computer for Canon and use it for the Canon EOS tool as a webcam. I've done a separate video on that, which I'll link in the chapters and description. So check that out. But yeah, this is the cable you'll need. Last one is the standard USB 2.0. You should be familiar with this. This is like keyboards and mouses and mouses and that is a little uh, a, well extender basically like a hub you can make more usbs male and female so this is the female side of uh, usb if you were to extend it uh, you can see i'll plug something in just so you can see it if it's in one way so that's the usb there and standard two is a standard white color you need to be careful online sometimes they'll try and sell your usb 3 which i'll show you now this is a usb 3 and how you can tell is normally inside it, it's uh, a blue. So you can see that's blue color, but online they are making cheats of these where they're selling you it as a USB 3, but it's not actually a USB 3 speed. It's meant to be a higher speed. Um, but that gives you a rough idea of those and examples. And this is a USB 3 hub. So actually, if you plug in a higher speed device into this, it won't lag. So that's like the main use of it. If you have a portable hard drive, you'll see a big difference in speed if you're transferring files on a USB 2 or a USB 3. So I won't get too technical with these. I'll give you an overview. Um, and let's show you something a bit different. So this is a USB OTG, which stands for on the go cable. On one side, it's a micro USB, which is what I showed you earlier, and it fits into the phone. And on the other side, it's a standard USB. So you can actually plug things into your phone, like a keyboard or a mouse. So that hub I showed you earlier, I'm plugging in here. And now you can see that lads come on there to give it power. So technically speaking, you can use that hub to give you extra devices on your phone. Okay, so what I'm going to show you next is one more USB option. Um, it's not really USB, but if you have a tablet or a Galaxy device, it's a similar type of hack for that device. So on the go cable, you can get as a mini or micro USB. This one is actually aimed at the galaxy tablet so you can see it plugs into the bottom of the galaxy tablet it gives you a usb a sd card and a micro sd card and at the same time i have a hdmi capture card here i'll link you in the chapters to videos um about the hdmi capture card i did a full setup of that this is more an overall of the cables and stuff so here i'll show you how i'm doing this so here i have a hdmi cable a normal sized hdmi which plugs into my HDMI capture card, which turns it into a USB, which then in turn, via that OTGB card, OTG card, it goes into my Samsung tablet. So what that actually is doing is what I showed you on the mobile, but instead of the mobile phone, it's a tablet device. So here I plug that in. And if I show you a few more examples of how the cables plug in, because ultimately you're probably watching this if you want to live stream with the camera. So here I have a camcorder with the HDMI out. I've used the HDMI mini converter to make my mini HDMI into a full. And on my Android tablet, I have installed the IP camera app. And you can see now that shows me a feed of my camera. So I could use that as a live streaming camera. Okay, next up we're looking at audio. For audio, it's gonna be a microphone. You need to pay attention to the jacks. This rings on here trrs is when it has more than one ring it has two rings and it has three rings you can get a jacks which actually convert a three to a two three is typically used on mobile phones so you can use it for uh, recording into the mobile phone however into the computer you may need a device which converts it to a single 
Um, if you're using a mixing board, which I'll show you a bit later, I have got a separate video on that, but I'll show you a quick segment. You may need a jack for that. Uh, this is a standard one for speakers, which you can plug into your PC. Here is a microphone, a professional microphone, which has a XLR plug. So this XLR is a full size XLR. You can get XLR to 3.5 millimeter converters, which is what this is. You plug it into your microphone and then you use the other side into your PC. There's varying levels of quality with these, so it depends what you're looking to do. But this is an overview to help you get to that point of understanding the cables. Um, you can also get the converters. Here you can see it converts it from a 3.5 millimeter to the full size, which you can use, which is 6.3 millimeter into a, a mixing board if you had such a thing which if you have a mixing board you'll understand these two larger ones go into the mixing board and you can plug the smaller uh, side into a mobile phone to use it for effects i'll link you to a playlist where i explain that there's also options here for mini xlr versus the full size xlr so pay attention to those if you have wireless mics they normally have the mini xlr type uh, jack plugs and again, if you want to use a different type of microphone with your wireless, you can actually get a mini XLR to a 3.5 millimeter mic converter, which lets you use the earlier mic we looked at, which is a purple panda here in your device. So you can actually convert it and that lets you get better audio. Speaking further away from the microphone than I was before. So now I think I'm at a good point where getting decent audio but then I don't know until I upload it. I want you to be able to use your camera to live stream with decent audio. So I'm going to start by showing you the connection. So I'm plugging the action camera in via the micro USB cable. There's my action camera view. I want you to see the preview as I do this. So that little window in the top left is the action camera. Here's another action camera I'm just showing that does not have a mic port. So how we do this is I have two microphones. The first one is this Boya mini shotgun type microphone i'll put this in the description as number one and um, you'll find well i'll let you hear it but there weren't great results to be honest however at a pinch you will get better audio than you would get from a laptop for example so here's the setup and we plug this into our pc or laptop into the microphone port there is something to note with the microphone leads you'll notice here this one has two rings and there's another one my second one that has three rings to support this video i've got a link in the description to my mailing list make sure to sign up to that and you'll get an instant email with help sheets guides and frequently asked questions which will help you get through this journey one of the help sheets in that guide is about microphone connections and cables so i think you'll find that handy but just pay attention to those if it doesn't work it's because that connector isn't right so here's a look at that i plug it into the laptop in the computer bottom left click on speakers and open sound settings this is the setting up stage basically and you'll see here i have the menu pop up and then i will go into the menu by going scrolling down and if you're full screen it might be on the right hand side sound control panel there's a number of ways to get here but this is how i get here and then you drag that across there's settings in the top which is playback recording sounds communication go to recording you'll see microphone and line in with mine i'm using the line in because the well line in is my mixing board so my microphone is the actual what i've plugged in now on the levels you'll see you can put that to high and you'll need to boost the microphone to get good volume you can see there that's how the volume looks now so we might knock that back to 20 decibels the higher that is the more noise it introduces. hello Okay, so this is the current boy uh, mic we are testing. So I have the action camera recording me right now. And I so there is the noise that I don't like. I'm finding a gap in the volume and then I'm going to do some settings. So then I'm doing effect and down to noise reduction. And this menu, I get noise profile while I'm selecting the gap there. And then I select the first boy mic. I do effect and noise reduction. And then I apply. Let me show you this. I do an OK. So you'll see that noticeably get smaller the noise in between so it's not as noticeable now i might do it again actually because i can still see there there is a bit of noise so i'll do the same thing again noise reduction get noise profile and then select the series that well with a couple of words i said and then noise reduction and apply or okay even 
and that will reduce it quite a lot. And then I have a special macro setup. I'll link you to a video where I talk about these, but it basically bulks up my audio. So now let's see how it sounds after that little bit of uh, manipulation. Hello. Okay, so this is the current boy uh, mic we are testing. So I have the action camera recording me right now, and I have the boy uh, mic recording the audio. I was silent there for a moment to give you the background noise. But if you're in a meeting, this is a quick way to get a mic attached to your computer or laptop. Next, let's do the next cam. Okay, here we go. So now I'm speaking into the purple panda mic, which is attached to me here. It should sound better because it's closer to me. So if you're doing a, a video live conference, this might be a better option. You can hide the wire. You might get loads of noise, but let me show you that. You can do something like that. And this is how the audio sounds for that. So you'll have a meeting. You can speak using this. And now, that was how it sounds silent. So you might get some background noise. But that gives you an idea of how to set up a quick mic. Excellent. So now you've seen how they sound. What do you think? Let me know in the comments how you found this. I've also got links to everything I talked about in the description. So you can actually pick up these mics. If you have any problems or you struggle, drop a comment. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. See you on my next video. Okay, so I've set up the Behringer now. I've got my XLR mic plugged in channel one. I'm using that line of results there. I've got gain halfway. And I'm using the master mix here to give good enough audio. What I did do was on the computer. Q802 USB. So I've taken out the box, separate video I've shown you all that. This is a basic setup. So here, two cables come with this. And these two cables are a power supply. You have to be careful with this power supply because it's, let me show you a close up. It's like one of those funny. Yes, video type ones where there's pins in there. It's metal, but it's fine. And there's a USB. I've already plugged this USB into my PC. This is going to go into the Behringer. And I've got a sh there. So you can see my actual desktop and what you can expect to see. Okay. So on the back of this unit, there is two areas. USB, which is this one. I'm doing this all backwards so there okay so the USB plugged in I remember there was three there was three microphones well three entries here but now you can see there USB audio codec does automatically recognize the Behringer and that's a good thing so step one's done and then because some microphones are XLR powered as in phantom powered there's a power supply that comes with it and again, in the back of the Behringer, there is, you can't see that really well. Just make sure it goes in the right way, because it goes in one way. Okay, done. So now, I'll show you that. You can see in the back, there's a USB and the power. Just be careful with the power, it goes in one way. Now, I'll tidy this up afterwards, but for the sake of a quick test and getting you started and showing you what this can do. Okay, so there's... The Behringer and what I'm going to do is put my XLR mic there so right now if I go back to this screen you can see microphone is there which is a USB so that now should be enabled but let me show you this screen okay so right now this XLR mic will go off I'm going to pull it out noises Turn the microphone. Listen levels. Okay, that's a hundred percent. So if I put the gain up on the okay, so here we go. So now I'm putting the gain up on the mixer. So I'm not doing it from the PC. So I plugged in the XLR. I went to my computer 
and selected the microphone properties in sound settings this is a pc and on that what i did was click on the microphone and increase the microphone for some reason it was low and then can you see this wait let me see if i can yeah it's not very good there let me see if i can do it like this might be better because that little action camera can't handle it can he okay so right now xlr is plugged in here and this gain first one was down so now it's really down down hello 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 so now i'm raising that gain to where i want it and that is about halfway gain and then the comp this one here if i increase that it increases the background noise so i've turned that back right down equalizer and highs i don't want highs so i want it to sound a bit more radio -y. mid mid all the way up mid all the way down hello hello and welcome to zorf talks photography that sounds a bit more uh, lows that's lows taken out if i put the lows back in hello and welcome to zorf talks photography put that back Ram. Oh, hello 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 okay i gotta play with these but that's basically getting you started and level one is at plus 15 i can still hear some noise and a bit of a buzz there let me turn that down okay so that gain a bit higher so now if i'm speaking over here this is without any audio effects and i was previously using something else which was this this little box and what that box did was not much at all really what it did was you had your xlr in xlr out and it had a power supply other side it was just a button just for phantom power so it didn't actually help in any way really because it was just giving me phantom power whereas now at least the microphone set up and you've joined me on the journey live I took it out of the box first time I'm using it and I've managed to get it to work while recording this is using Streamlabs OBS I'll do a bit more adjusting and testing and the main thing to remember is it looks more complicated than it is just think of it like this if you're doing one microphone setup plug your mic in USB power windows and that's your first line you gotta concentrate on that was your first one let me play with it a bit more figure out how to do everything and then... okay so i've set up the barringer now i've got my xlr mic plugged in channel one i'm using that line of results there i've got gain halfway and i'm using the master mix here to give good enough audio what i did do was on the computer you may have seen during my setup stage that i had my microphone on full just like usb codec and what i've done now is actually decrease that from 100 to 50 so it's actually halfway and the barringer mixer board is actually doing all the hard work for me now and we'll see how this audio sounds i think it sounds better than what i previously had because if you recall what i upgraded from was this newer phantom power box so the mic went in out and straight into the pc and you basically powered it on to get the power to the mic but now in my audacity section i can see that actually based on me speaking directly into audacity the voice is a lot more better than what i was getting in terms of the levels and i've got the maximix board here which i'm using to slightly increase or decrease my volume and also i'm actually speaking further away from the microphone than i was before so now i think i'm at a good point where getting decent audio but then I don't know until I upload this and see how it sounds like. And hopefully you'll let me know if it sounds better or not. So this is the conclusion to the Barringer. Quick setup. I'll do more videos about more in-depth stuff for live streams. Okay, so now I'm going to look at software setup. We'll start with OBS because that's what I use. And I'll show you how my OBS is set up, what it looks like, 
why I use it and how it helps me make my workflow better. I'm also going to cover programs like Teams, Skype, Zoom, Discord. The same idea applies that I'll show you here to all of those programs. It's just a matter of using the settings and picking your camera from the list. Uh, cost involvements in terms of do you want to pay for StreamYards online where they do all the encoding on the software so you don't have to have any intensive app running on your computer. System resources, so monitoring how much of your computer's hard drive or RAM and processor is being used because if you get to a point where you're trying to stream and your computer is not good enough you'll, you'll notice the difference in the quality of the video in lag so that's the software setup let's have a look at that section now what is OBS used for and why do you need it well you've noticed I've done a lot of live streaming videos and I'm going to show you an example of my screen setup here so you can see why I use OBS and then a secondary split screen for instructions. This is gonna help you because, you know what? It makes it easier, it makes your life easier. It looks a bit different because you can see my camera now. That's my camcorder that I use as a secondary view. So I'm gonna share my workflow with you. So stay tuned and you're gonna see some benefits of OBS and why it can help you, not only with live streaming, but you know what, with recording as well. Because right now I'm recording this video into OBS I'm not live streaming it. I'm recording it as one take. So that makes it less intensive for editing. You can see I'm flipping between screens. In the bottom corner here, you can see a little red button because I'm recording my screen on OBS because that makes a file ready to upload to YouTube. So and without any more hesitation, what is OBS used for? You know what, let me, can I share my screen with you? Okay, let me give you that. Let me bring up here and let's see what OBS actually is. Oh, let's go to their website. How did they? Okay, open broadcast software, not studio. I kept calling it studio. Okay, so it's a free and open source software for video recording and live streaming. So you'll notice there is video recording and live streaming. So think of it like not an editing program, but a one take recording software so you know you record on your mobile phone and that's it you don't want to edit it but you only got the one angle whereas here you can actually put overlays you can have things like little pop-ups you can have a little subscribe button like that so it gives you additional options you can even switch cameras and switch displays and have it's like basically editless so everything I'm doing is live and once I've recorded it however long this video takes me to record is how long it takes for the video to record some people record a video and then spend three to four hours editing all the multiple angles and all the different things together to make it better that's a great way to go down it uh, the route but depending on what you're doing like for example i'm doing talking tutorial type stuff mainly i've been doing recently to help you because i've noticed a lot of people want help with live streaming at the current situation so that's why i've, I've had this set up for about two years now since I've been doing more regular videos and open broadcast studio I keep calling it studio open broadcast software has helped me a lot so let me go straight into number one why do you want to use it why should you download it there's two versions OBS light I'll call it just as a, it's just OBS and then there's stream labs OBS so if I go to here and show you what I mean so now well, can I show you this? Yes, I can. So if I do wide, I clicked a button, but I also have an F key set up. So if I press F1, it goes to that screen. Now I've come to this screen. Down this side here. Let me. There you go. That's a nice view of it. So here, P live show, photography live show. Each of these sections in here, is one two can you see my mouse oh yeah uh, okay so one section two section let me put my camera on so now see that i kicked that button and a little camera came on in the corner that eye lets you put individual cameras on and off so now that camera's on and i can notice here that my volume's slightly loud but that's okay let me zoom out a bit so you can see it all Okay, there. So now this is a, a view of my display just to show you it live as it were, like how I'm doing it. So in this scenario, I have one webcam, Canon webcam, which is that front webcam. I have a Sony camera. What happens if I turn the Sony camera on? That 
turns on my camera here. Turn it back off, it's gone. HDMI is this camera here. If I turn that off, it turns it off and on because it's in the background, you can't see it. I've got some logos. If I turn the logos on, nothing happens because the logos are behind. So if I bring the logos in top and I do it, you can see that's my live stream uh, logo setup. So if I click of a button, I could go live and then turn my live logos on. If I don't want to go live, I turn them off. So that's why, and even the chat window here. So if I show you a chat window, if I bring that to the top and do chat, that would be where chat populates. Click the eye and I'm gone. So I've got a hold screen, which is my normally my background screen. I've got a one, a two, a three, and a four, and then a news and a Skype screen. Skype is where I do calls with the, like if I'm doing like a interview type scenario. So all of that's just being recorded as it is. All right, let me go back here, go back out a bit, and you can see. It's a bit of a, sorry. Oops, come on, there. Okay, so in the bottom corner, there's two buttons, go live or record. If you record, you're recording the file on your hard drive. So this video currently is five minutes and 42 seconds. Once it's done, it'll be an MP4 file that I can upload to YouTube. That's my job done. It took me five minutes and I've been able to share something with you a lot quicker than I would have normally done. Because that five minute video, if I edited it with all these angles and information, I would have easily spent an hour and a half, two hours on it. So right now it reduces the amount of time you spend. It also makes your live stream a lot more fancy. So if I go back to your nicer screen. And that's what OBS is. It's a piece of software that lets you record what you're doing live. The main issue you're going to have, not issue, but the main challenge you're going to have is setting everything up. That's the main bit. I've got multiple videos on my channel explaining how to set up a HDMI capture card. And my main route is getting you to record everything directly into OBS. So it cuts down on your editing time and you can just do a recording session and share what you have to share. I'll show you the examples in the software in a second. So this actually has something that can allow you to use this on top of uh, a desk. So if you've got a desk, you can put a couple of books up. You can even put like a, a water bottle or something and actually mount that on top of it. So it's got the right height. So you don't need to buy a stand or anything. It's just the case of adapting what you have, or you could have it as a secondary angle where you can do some top down examples. So let's go into the laptop and see how this would work in the, the software itself now. To support this video, I've got a link in the description to my mailing list. Make sure to sign up to that and you'll get an instant email with help sheets, guides and frequently asked questions which will help you get through this journey. So showing you the software settings inside of Zoom. Once you log in, you have a little cog here, you click on settings. It brings up your settings menu. Here you can actually have a few options for video and audio. Select on video and you'll see an option here for multiple camera listings you can decide between uh, you can see usb video general usb eos webcams there's multiple options there if i was to select that one down here then that is an action camera which we can use right now so it's a little bit dark you can use original ratio you can have a enable hd make sure to enable hd because that'll be the higher quality as well as have i plugged in the usb let me see if i can show you the secondary view okay so you can see they have switched between the cameras you can easily select whichever one is that you're interested in down here and up there for example so that's giving you multiple options to be able to use as a webcam so you're switching between them basically so if i was to be in a meeting let's make a quick new meeting it's connecting make that there that's a very close view can I show you this menu down here? Okay, so as closely, make that a little bit smaller so you can see it properly on the screen, just like that. So that's up there. You basically go down to the menu. Don't actually click stop video, but you click on the little tag here and you can flip between each of your cameras, which gives you multiple options and multiple views up, down, left and right. You can have multiple things if you're teaching. So that's a very handy option for you. To give you some great capabilities in your next stream. Thanks, I'm hoping you found that useful. This is a series of videos I'm doing to help you 
use and make the most of your live stream, especially if you're doing any type of educational streaming for classes or anybody else. Uh, if you're teaching things, that's a great thing. So I want you to be able to set up your angles and how you want it to work best. If you're having any problems or you're struggling, be sure to comment below. I'll get back to you and try and give you a solution or give you alternatives. Uh, ultimately, we want to make sure you're getting the best from your live stream and the people you're streaming to find it helpful. So check out this video. There's more options here to help you with that. How to add another camera in your team's video conferencing software. Today, I'm going to talk to you about that and show you examples. I'm going to show you the software, show you the cameras I'm using. You don't have to have expensive cameras. There's a few cheap options I've got here, such as a standard webcam and even an action camera that give you that extra view on your stream and your live session. Makes it a bit more interesting. Into your settings. And in your settings menu, there will be uh, devices. So there you can see that is my HD webcam on my laptop. Okay. So there is the secondary PC cam that we're talking about. So you could do something like that. Okay, I'm just doing a quick screen grab. So right now, if this is the meeting, you basically click on the camera and that is your secondary view there. On the right hand side, you can bring up the camera options by selecting more actions and hide device settings or device settings. And that brings up the side menu. You can turn the camera on by clicking that little button there and you can slip between the cameras. So I'm using the front facing camera. So for example, if I was in a meeting, I'd like to show you an example of what I was talking about. And I could bring you to the secondary view here and that will show you, okay, so that's what I was talking about. And you basically got a live two camera action. Or if you just wanted to have the one camera option in Teams, you can extend the legs or you could put the camera down somewhere else, just like that. So now you can see that's a slightly better view uh, during a meeting and that would be an action camera versus a normal HD front facing camera, which you have in your laptop. And that can be slightly blurry as you can see there. Quality is not excellent. Apologies, I'm recording the screen while showing this as I did not have the video recording software on my laptop. So there you can see a comparison of how to use it in Teams and switch between cameras. If you plugged more cameras in this list, you'll have more cameras. So that's something like this, where it's actually showing if you're doing some teaching environment, that's the top of my monitor. But you can actually position it so that it does a straight down. So if you're showing an example teaching type of course, then you can show your desk. You can show a certain item on your desk to show how to control it. To support this video, I've got a link in the description to my mailing list. Make sure to sign up to that and you'll get an instant email with help sheets, guides and frequently asked questions which will help you get through this journey. In this video, I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks to make your Canon camera a webcam. This is an updated uh, tutorial, basically tips and tricks. I'm going to let you know the problems people are facing and the best news is even with the new updated EOS webcam utility tool, the version one they've sent out, a lot of people were asking, does it work still with old cameras? And I've tested it and it does because this Canon camera T2i 550D in the UK is an old camera, which is not listed on their website as working, but lo and behold, it works and it's not excellent. I'm recording this at 1080p. That feed is a 720p and in OBS, which is Open Broadcast Studio, I record that feed of the camera and then I put in multiple scenes. So I've got another camcorder up here that you can see to give you like a, a double shot. So today's video, the aim is going to be, I'm going to let you know you can still use old cameras because I've used a 5D Mark II. I've used the 550D, works perfectly fine. There's a couple of tips I want to share with you to get the best from it because if you have an old camera like the 550D it doesn't have auto focusing so I'm gonna probably link you to a video which was titled something like why I don't use a capture card because I find it easier to do uh, EOS webcam utility recording because I'm sitting down and it's kind of straightforward what I do and um, how to connect it will also be linked I'll put 
in the description i might get rid of all that normal stuff i put in there i'll just put easy steps for you so i'll do one two three four videos and um, which will actually break it down because if you're following the channel you'll know i've tested this quite a lot i've done a lot of different things with it we've had loads of questions from people um, and loads of people that have said it hasn't worked and why isn't it working so what i'll do is i'm gonna take you to these questions first so if you're having a similar thing I want to give you like a verbal response to it so if you're trying to use your canon eos camera as a webcam and you're having trouble why would you have trouble well here's a couple of things i've noticed so here is a best cheap dslr you can buy to use as a webcam so i did a little video showing you you can use all dslr cameras you need to remember don't try and use a dslr camera which doesn't have a video capability what I mean by that is some people are trying to use things like the 1000D, which wasn't designed for video. It's only a photography camera. So if you don't have a, a video feature in the camera, then that's too, too old to be able to use this option. There may be alternatives, which I go to on my channel. So make sure you're subscribed so you can see those videos. Um, and okay, so I actually have the same EOS Rebel T2i. However, the EOS beta utility isn't picking up on the camera. So there's why is that not giving me read more so that's the type of uh, comments people are leaving so in the first five minutes of this video i should help so i've made a yeah so i also have the previous utility 2 installed not sure if it doesn't work in general or am i missing something so if you've the main thing to remember let me bring you back to full screen there's two types of tools you get one eos utility tool so it's e os utility tool that's designed to do tethered shooting so you plug it into your computer in the same way you would do as a webcam but it's only designed to take photos focus the camera and let the photo come onto your pc straight away so you can view it that's the eos utility tool the eos webcam utility tool is the new one which is basically a driver you install the program and if you don't know how to use it, you won't know if it's installed or not. So how do you find out? You need something like Skype, Zoom, StreamYards or OBS, whereby you can actually select a camera because in there you'll see an option that says EOS webcam utility. And that's how you enable the camera to be able to record it or stream on it. So some people I know that have done it, I've said, wait a minute, I've installed it, but how do I use it? You need a program. So that's point number one. Um, apart from that, there's been a few issues where people are having, let me bring you back to my other screen. Okay, so Robert mentioned he turned off Wi-Fi and it started working immediately. So if you have newer cameras that have a Wi-Fi built in future, make sure to check that out. It's, I'm glad he pointed that out because now I can share it with you. So if you're having that problem, that would help you. Uh, yeah, another person, 11 night also, uh, that worked for him as well, or them. Uh, I love this and subscribe, thank you. Great news, happy creating. He worked on a T6 is finally working so on the website i noticed whichever driver i looked at and downloaded they actually looked the same what i mean by that is the size of it was the same and the version was the same so i don't get why they've got different versions so whatever camera you've got just download the t7 version or t6 version and it works because i use the t7 version on my canon 550d t2i and the same one i used on my 5d mark ii i used it on a separate laptop so I did like a, a test on this laptop here uh, to kind of act as if I'm a new person installing it for the first time and installed fairly straightforward. I had to reboot the computer a couple of times because it gave me an error message, but I think that's down to it being an older computer. Um, I'm not even sure if this software was installed. I got the installer all right, but it doesn't look like it installed. I'm using a 100D Rebel one. Once installed, you need a view you need to view it in a program which is what i mentioned earlier i won't cover that again thank you for your help when i manually close the eos application my t3i was finally able to show its video feed via zoom cheers yes so remember if you're using the feed somewhere in a program you can't then use it in another program at the same time so if you had like a, a discord session open up and you were using that camera um in your discord session and then you decided to open up skype skype's gonna say i don't know I can't do anything with this because you're already using the camera feed so you shut down the other camera feed and then go to start in you know, the uh, ctr alt delete for windows task manager and close the program 
because sometimes if it's running in the background, it's still using the feed. I find that like a, a main problem for many people. Discord recognizes the webcam utility is a thing, but I can't find it anywhere in the computer's devices, any help. So I've kind of link off to videos where I talked about that, but I'm hoping this video will be like a overall or overarching thing to help everybody. Um, okay, so I closed my EOS app on my taskbar and it opened up. If yours gives the EOS message, but make sure another program or your EOS utility is not on. Otherwise the camera will not turn on. Thank you, Shakim mentioning that. Perfect. That's kind of my response to most people. So he's done that for me. Thank you. Uh, it shows it only works in the US. That's not correct. Um, even in the beta stage, I was able to use it in the UK. I think they said US only for some reason. I don't know why. But now they have also rolled out version one, which works in multiple countries. So check out their website, which I'll put in the description. Uh, thanks for the video. ATD worked. Okay, so we've got a few. Rebel worked. ATD worked. 22i works. 5D Mark II works, which are all cameras were, that weren't listed. So thank you. Your video helped. Good. Uh, if someone somehow get this working on the earlier mirrorless series cameras like my EOS M3, that would help my case tremendously. The mirrorless, there's been a, a situation where people's cameras are automatically turning off when they're plugging it in, like after 10 seconds or 20 seconds or whatever it is. And what I found is make sure you're powering it off uh, a US no, not USB, uh, a battery adapter. You call them dummy batteries. So it's actually like a, a normal camera battery, but it has a lead that you plug into either USB to power it continuously or plug it into a, 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 a plug. Let me bring it back onto there so you can see what I'm questioning about. So I've tried with almost every config I could think of, and it just doesn't seem like I can push the capability far enough to the EOS M3. When I plug it in the display on the camera, it just turns off. Nothing shows up on the actual camera source in OBS or anything else that can use the utility as a source. Uh, it sucks that these older models are just left high and dry. I either have to fork over. Yeah, you're true. We want to make sure that you can use it with the cameras you've got, even if they're old cameras. So we're going to try our best to get that working. The alternative is getting a cheap capture card. I purchased a, a cheap one, which is a HDMI capture card. I did a separate video about that. Uh, I can't seem to get hold of download of the old utility tool. However, I feel feel like still wouldn't work because of the EOS M. So I'm hoping he make that work because I followed up, but I didn't get a response. So I'm hoping that means it worked for him. Uh, do you have any ideas on what would the closest alternative version for the EOS 100D? So I noticed any uh, version works, like I mentioned before, you should be fine. What will my work for my 1200 be? So a lot of people are asking what camera version will work with their version. Download any one of the tools and install it, it works. That's your answer. Um, Cause well, I downloaded T7 and I made multiple cameras work on it. Uh, okay, thanks so much. Your uh, cable just plug into USB on both the camera PC. Yes, connected via USB cable. So if you're connecting the camera and you haven't got, I noticed some of the newer cameras don't come with the cable. So what you want to do is get a USB cable on one side. The other side that you plug into the camera is a mini USB. You get three types, USB normal, USB mini and USB micro. You want the mini. I might put a link in the description for you. But I don't want to bombard you with loads of links in the description to confuse you, but I'll also try my best to give you what you want. I have a Canon T4i Rebel. Only the USB is able to turn into a webcam. Can I use a HDMI mini on my connector? I'm not sure that the T4i is a clean, is it? it might help you if the T4 has a clean HDMI out. That's an alternative thing. Uh, done everything, but it keeps freezing and sometimes doesn't even recognize my camera. Any solution? Okay, they're using a 750D. So if you have a problem where your camera is not being recognized and you keep dropping out or the camera, you can hear it like engage, like the noise, and then it comes off the mirror lifts. There's a few things you can do. Sometimes it crashes if you're trying to go through multiple cameras. What I noticed was, for example, if I show you this, if I turned on my OBS session and I turned on my, I have USB devices for my cap my cameras so if i turn one on before the other one the canon uh, two will freeze up so then i have to close obs and do it in a different order so practice and once you find your balance you'll know what it is so on mine i know now i have to put my top down view this camera up here on first then i put on that camera as number two as in turn on the usbs then i turn on the eos webcam last when I turn that on last, it comes into my feed like this. You can see perfectly. I don't know why I'm wearing headphones. I'm not listening to anything. Um, yeah, okay. So apart from that, I can't, let me bring you back to the screen. 
this is kind of the overarching um, help for if it's not working basically i can't get a display to come up in my application i use i can disconnect my camera and the us utility shows an icon showing in showing a camera is no longer plugged in but when it connected still only shows the eos logo which programs have you tried in some cases what you need to go and look at is if you tried it in one program try another program because i found it was giving me problems in discord but it worked fine in skype zoom and obs so you need to find out if it's some type of bug and once you know it works on other programs you know at least that the camera works and the leads are right it's just down to the program settings and maybe a bug because the main thing you want to do is make sure it can work in any one of those programs which is a good thing if it doesn't work in any of them then you know it's not a program issue it's more maybe to do with the leads or the setting or the drivers or some install issue okay online english coach thanks for the video i am a t2i and i would like to know what cable you have used so i put a link to that and she was happy with that mini usb to usb get a nice long one because you could put your camera further away and it looks nicer it looks more like kind of this way so you kind of get a nice blur background um and let me go back uh okay yeah mac okay a few people asked about mac version so my plan is some people have mac computers i don't have mac i haven't used it but i'm gonna side load it on my pc as a dual boot and do like a virtual desktop maybe and i'm gonna test it in mac and try and give you answers but that's down the line because i know a lot of people are asking the question so i want to be able to help you and uh, i can't get my 500d to work what lead are you using yeah so sometimes if it's not working please do reply back and let me know if it works because i give you a resolution if you come back and say oh yeah okay that worked i can let the next person know who has the same camera okay we know it works with that camera uh we have a sx okay uh, was there any other main issues i can help you my screen shows the eos webcam utility beta no video tried my 7d and t through it to i okay Mm, I think that's the case where he had it open in multiple programs. So maybe the old tool kicked off when he was in the tray icon. Make sure to close it by right clicking on the bottom and closing the program. Uh, okay, that's some of the questions. I know I haven't answered all of them. There will be more questions that people will ask, and I'll try and do sessions where I can help you. If it helps and you're stuck, let me know, and I might do like a live session we can kind of answer it and do it live and i can share my screen or something and we can get through it because i want you to be able to use it and make content so i'll link you to a playlist about these videos i'm hoping this helped you if it didn't sorry for wasting your time and i'll see you on the next video about using your canon webcam as your canon dslr as a webcam see you on the next video guys i'm hoping you found that useful i'll link you in the chapters to another playlist that can get you into further details about setting up hdmi capture cards and i'll see you on the next video if i wasn't able to answer your questions be sure to mention it in the comments this is an extensive guide but i'm sure i would have missed something that someone wants to do so let me know about that and i'll try to help you in the comments if you've still not been able to do what you needed to do and this help this wasn't helpful reach out to me i'm on social media so we can find out another way of making sure it's tailored to you because i know a few people are using live stream for teaching purposes so i want to make sure i can help you to get well your teaching out there so people can learn from you as well